Is your community suffering with an identity crisis? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I know that sounds a little funny, but literally, some communities struggle with finding how to brand themselves and how to create economic opportunity. That's the topic of our show today. We are going to discuss how you set a course as a rural community to move forward to the next century to provide economic prosperity and provide the branding that makes your place cool. We will start by giving you a little background here at the Utah Rural Summit with some of the things that we have learned so far. Well, the mantra goes like this. If you can get people to visit, they'll want to live there. And if they live there, they'll want to work there. It's the ultimate chain of events that links economic development and tourism to each other, according to Bill Baker, who Chad will talk to here in just a little bit. But first, let's look at how do counties get people to visit? Well, it starts with a tax. All of Utah's 29 counties impose the transit room tax, better known as the hotel tax. And then there are 25 counties that impose the tourism, recreation, cultural, and convention tax, also known as the restaurant tax. The hotel tax is associated with lodging, whether it is a hotel, motel, lodge, or even a campground. The transit room tax has a specific formula that must be used in deciding on how to spend the tax dollars collected. Two-thirds of the tax must be used to promote tourism directly. This can be done by putting on events that bring people to the county or research to find ways to develop tourism. But mostly, it is spent on marketing, including advertising, and attending trade show events nationally and internationally. The other third can be used to build things like convention centers, cultural attractions, visitor centers, developing trails and recreational facilities. In Utah's more rural counties, some of the tax revenues can be used to offset the cost of other county services related to tourism, such as search and rescue, emergency medical services, law enforcement, and solid waste facilities. The restaurant tax is levied at 1% and can be used by the county or Convention and Tourism Authority to promote tourism or in the development, operation, and maintenance of tourist, recreation, cultural, and convention facilities. While only some of the counties have a tourism or convention and visitor bureau acting as a full-time marketer of the county, all counties collecting the tax must have a tourism tax advisory board. There are generally three misconceptions about these two tourism-related taxes. The first is that the hotels and the restaurants actually pay the tax. That is not true. They only collect the tax from the people who stay or dine in their facilities. The second thing that most people forget about is that some of the local businesses that benefit from tourism in the county have little to do with tourism directly. These are the gas stations, convenience stores, mechanics, recreational retailers, grocery stores, and so on, who are sometimes far from the hotels and restaurants that collect the tax from the visitor. The final thing that is often not clear is that the Travel Council or Tourism Board is actually not responsible for spending the funds. In reality, it is the County Council or Commission that approves the budget and makes final decisions on how best to spend that money, as it should be, for they are elected and as a result have a direct fiduciary responsibility to the citizens of the county. The boards serve in an advisory capacity to recommend how the county should market tourism. This is an important distinction to make as we enter our roundtable discussion talking about how you brand a county. For the county seat, I'm Derek Dowsett. Thanks, that was an interesting report. Well, right now we're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, we will talk to a man who's part of the Rural Summit here, who specializes in helping communities find their identity. In essence, he helps them find the brand that they should have. It will be an interesting discussion on how counties can move forward to prosperity. We'll be right back here on the County Seat. What would you do with an extra day in Utah Valley? Explore the Wasatch Mountains? Snap a family photo at Bridal Veil Falls. Cool off on Utah Lake or the Provo River. No 
matter what you're searching for, you can find it in Utah Valley. Bring everyone together. The Bear Lake Valley is a beautiful, rural, historical, and recreational paradise. The changing of the season makes now a great time to come our way to see the warm colors of fall in contrast with the cool blues of Bear Lake. Visit us in the Bear Lake Valley. Come for the ride, stay for the adventure. Welcome back to the county seat. We are bringing you our show today from Southern Utah University at the 38th Annual Utah Rural Summit. Uh, we are talking about image building for rural communities. And joining us for this part of a conversation is the author of a book called Destination Branding for Small Cities. His name is Bill Baker, and you work for Destination... Destination... Total Destination Marketing. Total Destination Marketing. And uh, you are an expert in helping communities brand. This seems to be a real struggle for like rural counties and rural towns is to how to put a brand on uh, their, their communities to draw tourism attention and economic development. So I guess my first question is, I'm a rural county and I'm sitting here saying, okay, well, I hear about authors all the time and your guys are always making pitches. Why do I care about a brand? We are just who we are. Why should, why should communities care about this? An important thing these days is that uh, cities of all sizes, whether they like it or not, any ambitious place is competing against other places for income, for tourists, <coughs> for new residents, for students. People always have other choices. And you have to be known and differentiate yourself and present value to those people who are looking for a place to visit, a place to spend money, a place to live, and uh, there's just so many other options out there. So you have to be organized. It's, branding is really about prioritization and how to put your best foot forward, how to invest, how to communicate, and continuously, consistently project what is your advantage. Why should I take money to just advertise to get people who may or may not show up instead of taking care of these problems. Uh, what would be your answer to that? A, a couple of points. Firstly, it doesn't always involve advertising. On many occasions, these communities are doing things anyway. What branding is really about is prioritization and focus and consistency. But the big question for them is focus on what? What are we? What do we want to be? What do we want to be known for? And on the other side, you look at many communities that have got what I might call their ad of the month. They're constantly changing, throwing mud at the wall, hoping something will stick. This is consistency. And it's also getting your partners within the community behind it as well. So a small community, they have actually less margin for error. They don't have the megaphone that larger places have got that can amplify and get a message across. Whether it's the right one or not, they can get it across. Smaller places have really got one chance very often. And what's very important is to get that one chance right. The other part of branding is there's two sides to it. Making a promise and fulfilling that promise as well. And fulfilling that promise is about experiences that you're going to extend to the visitors, to the new residents and such. And there's a real rub off for those residents anyway. Uh, I've got a cave in town. It's certainly not uh, the Lehman Caves or Carlsbad Caverns, but I've got a cave. Or well, the I, Beatles first sang. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's, it's a place, in, it's a hole in the ground, and we promote it as the most spectacular cave. You know, come to 
town ABC, the right. place of the most spectacular cave in the world, and people go out there and see there wasn't even one stalactite in it. Is, is that part of the problem, is that sometimes people try to pick the wrong asset to promote? Um, one, of, one of the very important things is you've also got to keep it real. These days, if you project yourself as something and you don't fulfill that, the world is going to know about it very quickly through social media. And you have a very weak brand. It has to be based in real assets that people can experience and that, in other ways, it provides leverage for other businesses, other people within the community um, to multiply the advantage of that place. Okay, well this is a very good spo spot for us to take a quick break. We've rolled through this very quickly. Uh, I'll leave this next question in the queue. We will be right back with the county seat. We're talking about how counties, cities, small communities in rural America actually go about branding themselves and making themselves a commodity that makes people want to come there. We'll continue our conversation with this when we come back on the county seat. We'll be right back. Color, it's something that can be seen. But have you ever wanted to reach out and touch it? Experience it. In San Juan County, Utah color comes to life like nowhere else on earth. Color can be more than an abstract. Color can be your gateway to a new world. Visit San Juan County and explore the past, present, and future in a way that you've only dreamed of. San Juan County, color your experience. Davis County is the amusement capital of Utah where people of all ages can enjoy fun rides and family attractions all year long. Experience over 50 thrilling rides at Lagoon, bowling or miniature golf at Boondocks, cool off with the family at Cherry Hill, or get out of the house and over to the Rush Fun Play. There's no end to the fun you can have in Davis County. Come to eat, stay, and play. Plan your next visit by going to playindavis.com and discover the fun for yourself. There are a couple great things about Uinta Basin. One is it's still small, it's community. That it makes you feel like when you go somewhere, you know everybody. When you know your neighbor, and your neighbor knows you, and you can trust each other, people look out for one another. I grew up in the Uinta Basin, and I think that it's a good place to raise a family. So we packed up our three kids, and here we came to Uinta County, and what a great place it was. It's not too big, it's not too small. And, and it has a lot to offer that you just don't get in the big city anymore. The weekends just never feel like they're long enough. By the time you get to a destination, you're worn out and you may need a vacation to recover from your last vacation. The solution is closer than you think and that's just what you need. You can find the desert at Little Sahara, the cool refreshment of Yuba Lake, escape to the green of the forest on the Nebo Loop. Make your escape to Juab County, it'll change your family forever. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking with Bill Baker, who uh, is giving us a little bit of enlightenment about how communities brand. So I, I guess I want to turn to what, pe what counties, w when you come in as a consultant to look at, at a, a county or a city um, that is struggling with developing a brand, What's the most common mistake? Where do they typically tend to be wrong, particularly rural communities? Well, there's probably a basket full of mis misunderstandings <laughs> about well, it. And uh, in that regard, uh, education is very important to us in better informing and enlightening the community on what this is really about. Misunderstandings one, two, and three are that this is not about a logo and a tagline. One, two, and three. Mm -hmm. Just getting people past that. It's not about a, a pretty new logo to go on our stationery or a new coat of paint. This is much deep, deeper than that. A brand strategy should be a guidance system for making you more competitive. That's what it's about. It's a guidance system for making you more competitive. What are the components of this guidance system? It's telling you, you know, in this strategy, it's defining who is our target audience. Uh, what are the strengths we should be leading with? You can't go with everything. You can't be all things to all people. It's about prioritization of you know, what are the key words we should be using for specific, those specific audiences? What are the images we should be using? What are the local products we should be using to match to them? Okay? It's not saying we're all things to all people. We've got limited resources as a community. We've got to use a rifle, not a shotgun, and this is a facility for helping do that. Yes, it does provide a logo and a tagline, but the logo and the tagline 
they're only keys or cues to what you're trying to store in people's mind. It should help them just unlock what they know about the place. So it's, it's not going to do the whole deal for you. So it's an attempt to associate with the re with an audience who will resonate the image of, yeah. of where the payoff is in that town in yeah. a consistent sort of way. Yeah, what's in it for me? <clears throat> what's in it for me? Moab is about um, you know, mountain biking and certain desert terrain and that's, they're not trying to promote other things. They're specific and what I said before, it's about focus. Focus on what? And consistency. Moab seem to have it right. They know who they are. They know who their target audiences are. They hone their market. They hone their messages to those specific markets. That's not always easy for many communities who are trying to, on too many occasions, please themselves, please the community, have harmony. But along the way, they're losing their distinctiveness and diluting it to where it's just bland. So, so give me an example of, of, of how somebody's diluting uh, you know, their, 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 their brand. Because, yeah. I mean, obviously I see that point where, yeah. okay, um, you, you have ATV and off-road trails like Moab and you try and brand yourself as the quilting capital of the world, you're on the wrong track, exactly. obviously. Yes. But, um, uh, you know, explain how, what the, the fragmentation is like as to, as to uh, you know, the, the elements that are wrong about what they're doing. Pro probably a good example, Chad, is that, you know the one statement that we do interviews, we do workshops all over the country in communities. Do you know the one statement that we've hear in just about every place at some point? This is a great place to live, work and play. And if you go and Google that, you'll find that there's about two million hits for that. And so when communities, when they're doing this themselves, reach that point, someone says, we're a great place to live, work and play. Oh, that's our brand. And they rarely get beyond that. And that's a point of parity with so many other places. You've got to have something that's distinctive. And is going to, you, you, everyone that wants to play this game has to be a great place to live, work and play. Okay? You've got to have that to play the game. What else have you got? And when you get a twist on it like Moab may have, that it, it, it has extra appeal for people who are uh, a mountain, mountain bikers. One of the presenters today said that not every community gets to be born beautiful no. and, and, and have that built into their system. That's right. So if your only claim to fame is that you're the uh, cow chip throwing capital of the world, mm. How do you play on that to, how do you, Probably how you, you do need it to fight? make it very aromatic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I mean, that's a serious question. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, the, the, I can think of a handful of communities that will look there and say from a tourism and, yeah. and getting people to come here, I can't think of anybody no. that would, but we all love to live here. Yeah, how that, do you help right. them? Maybe tourism isn't for them. Maybe they have a role to play where they may be just part of a circuit route or, or something. They may not, not all places can be destinations. Not all places can be the, for beef cattle or for wine. There's nothing wrong with that. Is the biggest problem that people are too close to the situation to really be able to identify what it is they should be branding in their community? Quite often that is a problem. Uh, communities try to do it themselves. They don't have the objectivity. If they are trying to generate tourism, they're not taking a view from the customer's point of view very often. It's what's going to please them locally, uh, what's going to cause the most harmony, uh, the least controversy. If, some, if somebody isn't making a little bit of a complaint about things, uh, you're probably not trying hard enough. There's a certain edge that you have to have in this, that you may be falling into the trap of trying to appeal to everybody, hence everybody is not uh, 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 happy with, with what you're doing. There are, a lot of, there are a lot of communities that will form a travel council mm -hmm. and they say, okay, your job is to, or an economic development advisory board, you take your pick, either one, and, and the members of the community, they, the political leaders, turn that over to them to generate mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and help pull business in. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you have a whole bunch of people that it sounds like you're saying are motivated by self-definition and self-interest or both. And, and the politics seem to be that they might even be fracturing whatever attempts they are making. Is, mm. is, is politics, local politics, is that detrimental to coming up with a good cohesive plan? 
Very often it is. Self-interest can be as well. Um, I, I like to use the, uh, the, the baseball analogy where um, in the lead up to a, a major league baseball game, we see the publicity there for the, uh, for the best batters and the best pitchers and that, that's what the duel is going to be. And those guys get paid millions of dollars a year. At the stadium, there's also others that get millions of dollars a year too, but they get no publicity. They're up there with the concessions for selling the beer and hot dogs. Now, how many people would turn up to the game? Uh, turn up to the game if they were just promoting the beer and hot dogs? Not very many. But there is a time to promote those beer and hot dogs, and that's when people are at the stadium. Unfortunately, many communities are promoting their beer and hot dogs. They're not promoting their best pitchers and their best batters to get the people there, then to promote the beer and hot dogs. So it's like if that makes sense, it does. So, <laughs> so, so you print up all the brochures. Mm to uh, tell people what to do when they actually get to your town to take a vacation and you're not spending any effort to promote the fact that it's the cool place to be for that specific kind of vacation. Is in, that in some cases, but it's also a matter of who do you lead with. You can't lead with everybody and you do have to pick winners from within. It, your, your caverns might be the strongest thing you have going for you. And some others, you might have a uh, flea circus or something like that that wants to have top billing, but you can't give everything top billing. The caverns will gain, the, that's your pitcher and your batter, if mm -hmm. you like. Mm -hmm. And these others may have a secondary role. But the good thing as well with websites and such, you can put, provide deep content in there mm -hmm. that can, at some point, give everybody a level of exposure at the right time. The right time is the most important thing. People may not travel hundreds of miles just for the flea circus, but if they know this is where the caverns are, they'll look to see what other things there are there. For some other groups, it might be the flea circus that gets uh, you know, the most attention at that time. But you've got to pick winners. I, I the drive success. A long, I drive a long way to see flea circus. <laughs> very, very well, you, very well managed flea. Yeah, yeah, very well managed. Yeah. Okay, well. Uh, I, I think this kind of helps drive the point of what's happening here. We're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, we are going to talk to Bill about how a community gets started and how they get past that first level of their leadership, uh, getting over the hurdle of identifying themselves and the self-interest. And so we'll find out the framework of that when we come back here on the Canyon City. Canab. Base camp for your Southern Utah adventures. You belong in Kanab. There is a place where the desert comes alive where rain breaks forth from solid stone and gardens spring from blistered rock. There is a place with enough color to make a rainbow jealous, where boulders are bigger than buildings and cliffs are higher than clouds. There is a place that will straighten your step, tighten your grip, widen your eyes, and open your jaw. There is a place. The farmer awakes as night releases its grip on darkness. This will always be home. As farmers, we understand that there is beauty in this solitude, and we also know that there is power in working together. The Utah Farm Bureau has always been there to fight for the needs of its members. To this day, Farm Bureau is still providing insurance to Utah's hardworking farm families, as well as your family. Utah Farm Bureau members also enjoy other benefits of membership, with discount programs on items ranging from vehicles and ATVs to health and wellness. The membership fees aren't big, but the results are. We've been around since 1916, and we're not leaving anytime soon. Utah Farm Bureau. We work for those who work to feed the world. Welcome back to the county seat. We're talking to Bill Baker, uh, his book, Destination Branding for Small Cities. And we've uh, had kind of an interesting conversation here. How do they get started? What do they do to change their course and direction and actually make their branding work for them? 
First of all, they've got to recognise that this is a, uh, a strategic tool. It's a business tool. It's not just about a new logo and a new tagline. So you've got to get past just using a local designer to create your new brand, as you might call it. Um, first thing is, is getting a clear set of objectives. What's this about? What do we want to be able to do when this is finished? Is this just about tourism, which is fine, or is this something that's about the whole community and community pride? And you've got to be careful in matching up those two things because they're not always, always compatible. Um, recognise how you're going to do this. You know, get specialist help if you need to. You need that outside objectivity, otherwise things can get bogged down in, in, in local politics, self-interest and uh, one-upmanship. Um, and then deciding what is that thing that we're going to specialise in? What do we want to be firstly known for? That can be tricky. And first of all is recognising that you're ready to do that. Read and understand as much as you can on the subject before it starts. Because as I say, it's more than a logo, more than a tagline. And um, have a process that's going to be consultative and reaches out to all the community so they can participate in it one way or another. But be ready to show leadership at the end. After you've listened, make strong competitive decisions that are going to help you with uh, new, in new income, new visitors, new residents, or helping local products. Uh, does usually the track record of your success, uh, if they'll stick with it, um, come back to pat them on the back instead of kick them in the behind? Sometimes, well, this is also more important than just a mark on a piece of paper. Sometimes it can be the catalyst for, for downtown re rejuvenation, re redevelopment of a riverfront. Uh, there are physical aspects of the community that can benefit from these things. You know, the Moab brand, I keep going back to Moab, but you know, you look within the community, you see that brand reflected through the committee, through the community, even into the types of small businesses and such that are available. So this is more than just a marketing tool. It's a strategic tool. In Europe, this form of place branding is influencing urban design, streetscapes, wayfinding. It's integrated into the community and what it is in many cases. So if you, so as an example, if you, if you take a riverfront and you say mm -hmm. that's your big asset, but it's all run down, so it's not just about branding to get people to come to the riverfront, it's about saying that's got to be our objective as to what we fix in this town. If, if it's realistic, it's got to be realistic, it's got to be able to be addressed within a reasonable time so that what you're promising can be delivered, mm -hmm. but you're looking for things where you can leverage as well, that it is going to have that economic development payoff. It's going to be a catalyst for small business as well. That, that's when you've got a good brand. The book, again, is Destination Branding for Small Cities. And your website, Bill? Destinationbranding.com. Well, that's easy. Bill, thank you so much for joining Pleasure. us here on the county seat. Thank you for joining us, allowing us into your home. Remember, local government is where your life and community happen. Make sure that you're part of the solution by being involved. We'll see you next week on the county seat. If you like this video, then we invite you to subscribe to our channel, The County Seat. You can do that here. And we invite you to share with your friends. We also invite you to get all the latest up-to-date information by following us on our social media channels. And if all else fails, make sure that you watch The County Seat Sunday morning at 8.30 right here on ABC4.